Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the major parts of a neuron, both with this artist's rendition of a neuron and then also a micrograph image or a microscope image. So in this picture right here, we have one neuron right here that's actually connected to a second neuron just like it, but we're only going to focus on the first neuron because the second one's exactly the same. First of all, this circular part right here that looks just like a normal cell if you cut everything else off of it, this part right here is called the cell body of the neuron. Okay? The other term that we have for cell body is soma, which means body. It's Latin for body. And so this part is going to house the nucleus of the neuron and pretty much most of the organelles. So endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, all that good stuff. That stuff's going to be housed inside the cell body. All right. If we look at these smaller projections from the cell body, and there's normally a lot of them, these that look like tree branches are called dendrites. Okay? Dendrites are important in receiving electrical impulses from other neurons. Okay? So dendrites are receivers of information. And when we say information, we generally mean an electrical impulse. Okay? So dendrites receive those. The cell body can also receive electrical impulses, but the dendrites typically are what we consider as the receiving ends. Okay, But these are dendrites, this is the cell body, and housed within the cell body we have the nucleus. Now, there's a much larger projection. Not only is it thicker, it's also longer, and there's typically only one of them per neuron. This is called the axon and it's a little bit more complicated than the other parts. So this whole thing is called an axon. The axon does not receive electrical impulses. It actually relays new electrical impulses to the next tissue or cell in sequence. So in this sequence, the next cell is a neuron. It could also be a muscle cell, okay? But the whole point is this actually carries a new electrical signal to another cell type, okay? If we look at the axon itself, it's connected to the cell body through this triangular region right here called the axon hillock. And the axon hillock, as I say here, is the region between the cell body or soma and the axon. And the axon hillock is what initially generates that new electrical impulse, which we'll come to call an action potential. Okay? So the axon hillock, if programmed to do so, creates that electrical impulse and moves it down the axon to the next cell in the sequence. Now, on the axon, you'll see these little insulating regions right here. These are actually called myelin sheaths. Okay? So a myelin sheath is a region of the axon that's covered in this structure that both insulates and protects the axon. And as we'll see much later, it actually speeds up the electrical signal. So these right here, one, two, three, these are called myelin sheaths. And for most axons, there's going to be some degree of myelination. The regions between the myelin sheaths, like right here where my mouse is, or right here where you don't see any myelination, or no myelin sheaths, these are called nodes of Ranvier. And a node of Ranvier is a region of the axon with no myelin. So it's a region with no myelin, or we could say between myelin sheaths. Okay, so that is the node of Ranvier. The last thing I want to talk about is what's called a synapse. A synapse is basically an indirect connection between normally the axons of one neuron and the cell body or dendrites of a second neuron. So if we look right there, I'll kind of blow this up, what we see is that the axon, or at least one projection of the axon from the first neuron, is actually connecting with the cell body, or in some cases, like here, the dendrites of the second neuron. That connection, which it will turn out to be indirect, is called the synapse. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So those are the major parts of neurons, at least this artist's rendition, but we can also look at this under a microscope. So right here, 
this is going to be the cell body of the neuron. Okay? This is the soma or the cell body. Now, this large dark spot that you'll see in the cell body, it's really where the nucleus is. The dark staining part is technically the nucleolus, um, but this whole region right here is going to be the nucleus. Okay? Just understand the dark staining part is technically the nucleolus. Now the question is, how do you differentiate the dendrites from the axon? Well, the axon is thicker, but it tends to be all by itself. Okay, so notice the axon, there don't appear to be any dendrites in close proximity to the axon. The dendrites, in contrast, are normally clustered over on one half of the neuron. So here's a dendrite, here's a dendrite, another one, another one, here's one, and then here's the other dendrite. Okay, the axon is all by itself. And then what you'll typically see in this tissue is you'll see these little dark staining regions around the neuron. What these are are the nuclei of what we call neuroglia, or glial cells. So glial cells, or neuroglia, or neuroglial cells, these are supporting cells of the nervous system. The most common type of glial cell, or neuroglia, is the astrocyte. Um, and it's really impossible to say what these are right here. Um, some of these closer to the cell body might actually be astrocytes. Some of these near the axon might actually be oligodendrocytes, but the whole point is that when you don't see the neuron itself, but you see these dark staining spots, these are the nuclei of neuroglia, or glial cells. So hopefully that makes sense. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.